Welcome to Audit Archive, where we run you through some of the most questionable and rather atrocious police encounters. Today, we're looking at a case where two police officers harassed an innocent disabled man by continuously demanding his ID and then violently threw him to the ground when he didn't let them violate his rights. On January 10, 2023, Officer Philip Smith of the Santa Rosa County Sheriff's Office was out on patrol duty when he was conducting random tag checks, which are a law enforcement practice in which officers scan the license plates of vehicles on the road to verify their registration status, check for any outstanding warrants or stolen vehicle reports, and monitor the activity of motorists. Amidst this, Officer Smith came across a pickup truck with expired tags and subsequently pulled the vehicle over, initiating a traffic stop. A man named Michael Holbin, along with his family, were occupants of the pickup truck, and upon approaching the vehicle, Officer Smith immediately asked them all to step out since he allegedly perceived an odor of marijuana coming from inside. Following this, Officer Smith decided to ID all the occupants of the vehicle and found no criminal record for anyone, including Mr. Holbin. Quinn, step out. How you doing? Yeah, I <laughs> see that. Oh, yeah. Do I need to get my daughter out? She's oh, you got a kid in there, too? Yeah, yeah we're going we to search the vehicle. Okay. Yeah, just hang, just hold right where you at, sir. Sir, just hang tight right there. Just hang out in front of my partner's car there, if you don't mind. You can go ahead and step out for him. You ain't got no weapons or not, illegal narcotics on you? One second. Let me, let me patch it down for you. I don't, I don't approve of this. I've broke no crimes. I'm a passenger of a vehicle right. going back. I no searching. Turn around. I didn't say I was searching. I said I'm patting you down for well, weapons. Well, I appreciate you so don't turn put around. your hands on me. Go ahead. Okay. But you know, I appreciate you not, man. It is right. No, sir. If I, am I putting a threat to you? I, I said I patted you down for him. weapons. Yeah. Don't have to be that difficult. Either one of them gave no lift. I mean, I'm trying to get back to work. I understand man. that. You know, we smell like you can't get in the car and smell like we do not expect you to stop. So I'm trying to be nice. You run your driver's license. That guy's got to tow his ride because he don't have a license. If you don't want me to take your license back, you run the information. So therefore, it's probably going to get towed. Towed? Yeah, towed. You don't have a license. First and foremost, it's worth highlighting that Officer Smith used the odor of marijuana to warrant an investigation during the traffic stop and subsequently ordered the occupants to step out. If we take a look at the 2007 case of State v. Williams, the Florida District Court of Appeal back then made it clear that the odor of burnt cannabis emanating from a vehicle constitutes probable cause to search all occupants of that vehicle. However, as times change, laws also adapt. So after all the legalization surrounding medical marijuana, in 2022, the District Court of Appeal held that the sight or smell of a substance presumed to be marijuana can no longer provide probable cause to search a vehicle or its occupants. Judging by this, it's debatable whether Officer Smith had legally pulled the occupants out and searched them. In the case that Officer Smith was not justified in his actions, it could be concluded that he was essentially violating the occupants' Fourth Amendment right, which protects people from unreasonable searches and seizures by the government. Another point to note is that Mr. Holbin was initially asked by the second officer on the scene, Officer Forrest Neff, to provide ID as part of the investigation. In response, Mr. Holbin did comply and showed Officer Neff his ID, but didn't allow him to take it along inside his patrol vehicle to run it. He claimed that he didn't need to provide ID in the first place. Hey, I'll 
got to get back to work and they get a license driver to get a vehicle up for this Can you call Jimmy? Thank you, my love. My wife's walking from our house down here to come get the vehicle and drive. She's a license driver. That'll be left up to my partner. Is there insurance on it? Did you give my partner insurance? I think I have it in the glove box. Wait a minute. He says he thinks his insurance is in the glove box. Yeah. What, he refused to give you his ID? No, he gave it to us. He to Okay. 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 As seen in the footage, Officer Neff very clearly told Officer Smith that Mr. Holbin did provide ID and that he was going to run his name through the system anyway. This minor detail is to be kept in mind as it later exposes Mr. Smith's tyranny. This is also an appropriate time to discuss whether Mr. Holbin was indeed not obligated to provide the officers with his ID. Before we refer to the law, it's worth noting that Mr. Holbin was not the driver of the pickup truck, he was in fact a passenger. So while keeping that in mind, it's stated that multiple courts, including the US Supreme Court and Georgia Supreme Court, have ruled that attempting to identify the occupants of an automobile is within an officer's prerogatives in order to assure the officer's safety. A passenger is not required to give identification in response to that request. This means that even though an officer may request ID, it's not a passenger's legal obligation to do so. In this case, Mr. Holbin did initially provide Officer Neff with his ID, but watch what happened when Officer Smith asked Mr. Holbin for his ID once again, basically for the second time, despite knowing that Officer Neff already had his details. Did you get her ID? Okay. Sorry, I need your ID. For what? Because I just, I got the right to identify you. You're in a vehicle. No, you, sir, you do not. I have not committed a crime. All right, turn out the channel. Because no. you're refusing no, to identify you yourself. Good Lord, no, you've already refused. Please, don't, don't, turn, oh around don't, don't turn around on me. Don't turn around on me. Don't turn around on me. Holy s! I have oh never God. been abused by cops. Never in my life have I ever been took to the ground. Oh my God! Wow! Wow! Holy! That was uncalled for, sir. You're right, it was. Wow! In it. Ow, my chin! Oh my God, dude! Oh my God, man! Call Jimmy now. Get me a lawyer now. Call Jimmy on my phone. Yeah, I'm yeah. good. Thank you. Call Jimmy. I want a lawyer now. Fridge legs. Yes, sir. Bring my phone. Bring over this stick. Put uh, Jimmy. You got Jimmy on there? Stay back there over there. <laughs> Call Jimmy now. Where's your ID? Uh, it's in my phone. The one that you threw that I was trying to get out. To I didn't get touch your phone. When I pulled my phone out, you grabbed my arm and slammed me to the ground. Okay. You my phone, my ID, get my ID out of there. Dude, my knee is hurting. Can I turn around and sit down on the car, please? You sit right up there in front. Please? Right up front. Call Jimmy now. What we've just seen is no less than ridiculously excessive use of force against a man who had essentially committed no crime at all. This is the perfect time to mention that Mr. Holbin was a disabled citizen since he had previously suffered from a severe back injury resulting in a fused spine which gave him mobility issues. This is why Mr. Holbin was in visible pain when Officer Smith aggressively held him by his arm and slammed him to the ground without warning. Under Florida law, excessive force is defined as using force that is not reasonable or which is excessive given the circumstances of the situation. 
and it's also stated that many police officers are trained that force should be applied in incremental steps, like starting with respectful requests and elevating as necessary. It's also a common practice to use the same amount of force towards a suspect that the suspect is using towards the officer. So by taking this into account, we can safely conclude that Mr. Holbin was unfortunately subjected to unreasonable and excessive force. Hmm? He's being stupid. Yeah. He refused to give his ID. Yeah. Yeah. Before I could remember any stuff, I gave it back to him. Gotcha. 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 First time I've had handcuffs in 10 years and I get slammed. Do you, uh, you need medical attention? I want out of these cuffs. Am I, am I under charge? You're being detained right now. Am I under arrest? You're right? being detained. Do you need medical attention? I will not answer any more questions. Okay. He's, he's refusing everything. So. You know, you watch YouTube videos all the time and think, man, this really don't happen. It really does. When you when you refuse to cooperate and you're trying to spin around when I'm detaining you, that's what's going to happen. All you have to do is be cordial and compliant like these other two. And a form of detainment is, sir, you're detained. We are trying to have a discussion. What you did is forcibly put me under arrest. No, I've detained yes, you. you. Did. No, you didn't. I have this not said not you're under arrest. arrest. I have not told you you're under arrest. I've told you you're detained. Smith. Smith? Unit 94. Thank you. You're welcome. And it's all recorded. Good. I'm glad your goodbye cam is yeah. on. Yeah, always. Because Those I asked cans. you a simple question, and all you had to do is respectfully answer that. And what question did you, did you ask not, me? I said, have I committed a crime? Why do you need to see my ID? That's all I said. I said, no, I'm not going to give you. The I plain you odor question. of marijuana was smelled in the vehicle. You already know this. You're just being a douchebag. That's it. Bottom line. That's all you're doing. These two have been nothing but compliant and cooperative. You've been running your mouth ever since... My partner I approached you. You're still running it. I have not ran my mouth. Okay. I've been so well, since you don't want to answer any question, they just just stand there and shut up. That's the best thing for you to do. Okay. Wow. May my kids call my wife, please. I think your wife's already been called, hadn't she? Yeah, and she's walking here. Okay. Well, well they can't leave to go get her. The footage captured Officer Smith calling Mr. Holbin stupid and a douchebag, once again showing disdain towards him. At this point, Mr. Holbin's wife was already on her way to the scene so she could drive their pickup truck back home. Next, watch as Officer Smith and Officer Neff both appear to discuss the ordeal and presumably try to come up with the charges that they could level against Mr. Holbin, who has still done nothing illegal. What's alarming in this encounter is that Officer Smith subsequently muted his body cam when speaking to Officer Neff, and this leaves us all wondering what was said during their investigation. After their discreet discussion, Officer Smith was quick to inform Mr. Holbin that he was now under arrest for obstruction. But this is where Officer Smith's tyranny became obvious. Officer Smith lied to Mr. Holbin's face by claiming that he was unaware of the fact that Mr. Holbin had already provided Officer Neff with his ID. Officer Smith was forgetting that his body cam captured Officer Neff very clearly telling him that Mr. Holbin already showed it to him.
Yes, sir. Obstruction. What did I obstruct? I asked you for your identification. Okay. Well, you, I had already you refused to give me your identification. Can I say something, sir? Sure. You're, you're, you have been forceful since you met Crosby, but you have not actually took the opportunity to step back and make an opportunity to be. I had already gave my ID, legally ID, to your officer. I don't know that. <laughs> I was on this you side of the truck. You had already gave it to me. I'd already gave it to him, and he had handed it back to me. All right. So I did not. All right. Did not obstruct by not ID. Okay. I did ID myself. All right. So I'm on this side of the vehicle. Give me your ID. I, I asked. You ordered it back. I asked you for your back. That's not what. That's not what's in question. We didn't have. We tried to run your name through our M and I, which is uh, our local system, first name and last name, right? And it's Sorry, not in our system. But maybe you've never been in trouble. Before. I have a Florida driver's license and I've never been in trouble. That's my thing. I, that's why I told you. I have never encountered police and got slammed. So you do understand that if you arrest me, I will take this to court and I will sue. Let's pick a number. Let's stand in line. <laughs> We get this all because the time. I have done nothing. You ran my name. Nothing came up because because I don't get in trouble. I didn't run your name after. I had to get your ID again. First, middle, last, and then. You ran my ID. I've never been in trouble. Nothing came up. So you're going to arrest me because I refused to get my ID the second right. time when I asked why? Now, now you won't you won't let me explain. Okay, I've, I've listened to you talk. Now listen to me talk. All right. I'm standing on this side of the truck. The windows are tinted. The sun is in my eyes. I don't know what happened on the driver's side of the vehicle. The windows are up. I can't see or hear nothing. Okay. My partner smells the odor of marijuana. We get y'all out of the vehicle, which we're well within our rights to do so. And at that point, we're well within our rights to ID everybody in the vehicle. Okay. You're over here. My partner asked me to get your ID. He's ID the young lady and the driver. He asked me to get your ID. I walk up. I'm, let me finish. I walk over to you and ask me for ask you for your ID. And you said why? Well, I'm not. I'm a passenger. Why? And I said I need your ID. You wasn't going to give it to me. So I said at that point I pulled my cuffs out. I attempted to let me say I attempted to cuff you. I don't have to tell you. I can ask you, and if you refuse, then I have to do. Yes, you do, sir. If I'm I ask you. Why, or you're asking for my ID? Yeah. By law, you have to tell me why you're asking for your ID. I just simply asked a simple question. Why? You, you already That's knew. It. My partner had already asked yes, for your and ID. I already gave my okay. ID. By law, I didn't you, have to at the time because you, I had not been told anything. You did. I had not done well, we got before. you out of the vehicle, okay? I approached you, asked you for your ID. You refused. So at that point, truck, so. okay, well, we can, go to, we can go to court and the judge can figure it out. But today you're going to be charged with obstruction and you're going to jail, okay? You're really going to do that to the only thing. You see what you're looking at? You see that baby over there? You yeah. see that baby in that belly? Yeah. You see that boy? There's yeah. four other kids that yeah. depend on me. You really going to pull this off today? Yeah, I really am. Okay. Because you're really a piece yeah. of work. A man that's out here does nothing but work seven days a damn week. Okay. You ran my name. I've never I didn't. got in trouble. I didn't run your name. He I still don't know your name. I just asked my partner for your name because I still don't know it. He just told you. No, he didn't. There's nothing he on said it's. Record. He said it's my on. License he, are valid. he said it's on the card. We were just standing there listening okay. to the conversation. All right. You, it doesn't matter if your license are valid or not. That that doesn't that doesn't make you you know a model citizen. <laughs> yeah. You ran my name through. I didn't run your name at all. I have no charges. Okay. No nothing. My partner said he tried to run your name, nothing come up because he didn't have your full name. It's on, I have a valid Florida license. That's about the most retarded age. Which you, <laughs> which you didn't give to him. Never mind, dude. It's all right. Okay. Wow. All right, sir, come with me. Can I get my phone and take it with me? Well, I'll get it for you. I don't know who's made you mad today. Nobody. I woke up on somebody a, has. I woke up and seen the day of lights so and my day's yeah, awesome. And you thought you would arrest the guy. Officer Smith was clearly adamant that he would be taking Mr. Holbin to jail for obstruction. And when we look at the definition of obstructing justice under Florida law, 
it becomes even more obvious that Officer Smith was rather uneducated on the law itself. It stated that, Obstructing justice is an umbrella term for any actions that prevent law enforcement from learning about a crime or those involved in that crime, and that it ranges from resisting officers with violence to false personation to fleeing or attempting to elude a law enforcement officer. It goes without saying that Mr. Holbin exhibited none of these actions, which tells us that he was being falsely arrested at this point. Anyway, Mr. Holbin's wife finally made it to the scene and Officer Smith immediately walked up to her to try and convince her that Mr. Hoban was obstructing him in his investigation. However, she appeared unconvinced and refused to buy Officer Smith's version of the story. She subsequently dialed their family lawyer's number to speak with him. You, you Michael's husband? Okay, I'm Deputy Smith. Basically what happened uh, my partner conducted a traffic stop on the, the, the black truck. Okay. Um, we, we, well, he approached the driver's side, I approached the passenger side, he smelled odor of marijuana. So at that point, we got everybody out of the vehicle. Um, he ID'd the driver, he ID'd the young lady. Um, my son and, and daughter. Okay, all right. And Michael is your husband? Yes. Okay. He asked for his ID. He refused to give it to him, said he hadn't done nothing wrong, got him out of the vehicle. He ran the driver, he ran the, the female, mm -hmm. your, your daughter. And at that point he asked me to get your husband's ID. I walked over to him, asking for his ID, he, re he refused to give it to me. I said, I need your ID. He refused again, so at that point I took my cuffs out, grabbed his arm, attempted to detain him. He attempted to jerk away and spin on me, so I took him to the ground, and he's going to jail today for obstruction. Okay, I'm calling my lawyer. Okay. Hang on, I'm calling so, my lawyer. No, sir. Okay, so I'm going to take him to jail, so y'all have a good day. You're, you're seriously taking my husband? Yep, I am. Ultimately, Mr. Hoban was charged with resisting officer without violence to his or her person. This was a violation of Section 843.02 of the Florida statute. It stated that, Whoever shall resist, obstruct, or oppose any officer legally authorized to execute process in the execution of legal process or in the lawful execution of any legal duty without offering or doing violence to the person of the officer shall be guilty of a misdemeanor of the first degree. As of the date of this recording, Mr. Holbin has not made any further updates public to us. He has not shown any interest in filing a lawsuit as of yet, and it remains unclear whether the charge against him was dropped or not. Be sure to check out our previous video where we cover another outrageous police encounter.